this meeting to order uh, May 7th. Welcome everyone. Lonnie Hayes, the Commissioner, thank you for coming and joining us tonight. We appreciate, appreciate it. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Okay. We've had a uh, meeting on April 2nd and April 19th in the minutes. If we go back up just a second, I want to uh, point out that Berlin Curtis is unavailable tonight. His wife's having some issues health-wise that Berlin needs to do with her. Let's have a motion to excuse Berlin from the meeting. Sex so. it. Farrell second. All in favor, raise your hand. Okay. Miss Janet, too. Not used to Janet being gone to meeting. A root canal or a town board meeting. <laughs> 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 Not a root you make a choice? <laughs> okay, let's talk. Let's, let's get back to the minutes of April 2nd, April 19th. Anybody see any burn omissions or? I need a motion to accept All right, let's start. There's a second sitting. All in favor, raise your hand. Okay. I want also to uh, make a motion that we uh, that we modify the agenda. Uh, Mr. Dave Lynn is present. He called uh, some of us earlier, not at agenda time. He's wanting to request us to consider uh, a minor road closing coming up in June, it would certainly be better if we could give him a decision this evening rather than wait until June. So I would ask if we could handle uh, his uh, request uh, just after the public session. The motion. Second. 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 All in favor, raise your hand. Thank you. Okay. 705 or close enough. We got a public hearing for the petition for the rezoning for Garrett and RJW. Derek, come forward, just give us a few words, please. Just to, just the executive summary of okay. that. It should be included in your agenda packet, and this is just to clear up a little minor change. It was a non-conformity when the revision to the, to the zoning code took place. What we have here is a rezoning petition submitted by James Garrett, and it's to rezone his property from MICR, Medical, Institutional, Cultural, and Residential, to Secondary Commercial, and <clears throat> the property that's beside it is owned by RJW Holdings Corporation, which also contains Welch Automotive. Both of these properties are accessed off Depot Street, and the properties that are directly across the road, <clears throat> of course, accessed off Depot Street, and there's on C2 as well. So what he's requesting is to change this from medical, institutional, cultural, and residential to C2, so he can continue to operate his business. And in doing this, we would be allowing Mr. Garrett <coughs> to continue operating his business, while at the same time clearing up the nonconformity. Planning boards met? Yes, sir. The planning okay, board's met and they've recommended this approval for rezoning. Okay, thank you for now. Stay tight. Anyone here to speak for or against the petition for rezoning for Garrett and RJW Holdings? Being no one wanting to speak, either for or against, and I'll declare the public hearing closed and we're back in open session and uh, leave it up to the board for further questions, comments, motions, whatever. Nobody had signed up to speak for it. Derek, any negative, anything for anybody surrounding, is it going to impact like Welsh Automotive, is it going to impact them in any way? No, and you know, in speaking with Mr. Grooverman before he left, it was uh, his opinion that as well that this would just clear up basically because both of these parcels were zoned business under the old zoning code. So in doing this, this would just be clearing up this nonconformity and allowing these uses to continue. So it's just basically just uh, 
clarifying that. I think this is one of those in here, correct me if I'm wrong, but the, the map on the UDO window effect, we take the line for this zone versus this zone, and some property owners would have preferred it to be here rather than there, and this is one of those that really could have gone in, into the commercial district that it's now being moved to. That motion. Any discussion? <coughs> All in favor, raise your hand. All right. application for the Westgate Terrace. I believe some of you folks are, are here for that. Uh, again, Derek, just give us the executive summary, please. Just give us up to speed. <laughs> this application was <clears throat> for special use was submitted by Fitch Development Group. It's a 60-unit affordable complex, uh, affordable housing complex, and it's located basically directly behind Ingalls in the Westgate Plaza Shopping Center, accessed off Roller Mill Road. These parcels that are involved in this contain about four and a half acres, 4.48, and these would be, of course, utilized for development. The site fronts Roller Mill Road. Utilities are available to this site. In <clears throat> They're requesting special use for the C2 district, which requires a special use permit for multifamily dwellings. And in discussion with Hollis Fitch, he's here tonight, he's indicated that the North Carolina Housing Finance Agency has made it a requirement for the tax credit funding that any proposed affordable housing development should be located within a half mile of a food store and a drug store. And this site, of course, being located where it is, fills that requirement by the North Carolina Housing Finance Agency. The planning board has met on March 27, 2012 on this development. They voted unanimously to recommend it to approval, uh, recommend it for approval at the town board meeting. Uh, All right, Mr. Rowan, in accordance with the uh, duties of the planning board, you understand that the planning board chairman, Denton Higdon, signed a special use application findings of fact relative to this application. He did? Yes, sir. And that he found, they found as the board the following findings of fact. The development proposes to have three buildings within six main entrances containing 60 residential units with a community building, management office, and playground, hot lot, and sitting areas as amenities. Are you with me? Yes, sir. And the use of development is located, designed, and proposed to be operated so as to maintain and promote the public health safety and general welfare of the developers indicated that the development will conform to the regulations of the state of North Carolina for affordable housing under the low income housing tax credit development program as administered by the North Carolina House Housing Finance Agency. They found that to be a fact. Yes, sir. There are or will be at the time they are required adequate public facilities to serve the use or development as specified in the UDO. The per property is currently served by the Town utilities adequate capacity is available for the number of units in this development. Roller Mill Road will be the main access to the site. Did they find that as a fact? Yes, sir. The use or development complies with all required regulations and standards of unified development ordinance or with variances thereto, if any granted pursuant to the UDO, and with all other applicable regulations. No variances are required at this time, and the new development complies with or will comply with the UDO with reference to special uses and other zoning provisions, did they find that fact? Yes, sir. The use of development or development is located, designed, and proposed to be operated so as to be compatible with the particular neighborhood in which it is to be located. The proposed development will not cause disruption to the area surrounding the property. The proposed development will be visible from Lower Mill Road and will overlook the Westgate Center area. Did they find that as fact number E? Yes, sir. The use or or development conforms with the general plans for the physical development of the town as embodied in this ordinance, the principles of growth, the thoroughfare plan, and any other duly adopted plans of the town, the special uses proposed 
is in compliance with the UDO, the land development permit when applied for will meet the UDO requirements before issuance. Did they find that as a finding of fact? Yes. Okay. And in your position as, as planner, do you also support these findings of fact? Yes, sir. Okay. We're now in the public hearing. Uh, those who have signed up and those who want to be heard briefly, maybe who haven't signed up, they, you know, you'll have a right to come, come forward. You'll also have a right to ask Mr. Rowland some questions for, to the extent that he's able to give you an answer because uh, we did, when, you, when there's a special use permit, it's a little more complex process than just a, a rezoning or something. So there are certain findings of fact that need to be found by the planning board and adopted by the council before a special use permit can be uh, approved. So we've got Mr. Thaddeus Green signed up, sir. If you would like to come forward and tell us what's on your mind, we'd be glad to hear from you. Or Brownlow, I guess. Yes, sir. Can I just stand here? Sure you can, Brownlow. Well, uh, what I'm concerned about is, is uh, the traffic through there and what's going to be done with the, with the transportation through there and the police protection through there. One night I was sitting watching TV and the man just opened the door and walked in. And I jumped up and grabbed him and him and I went off with that concrete ramp in the road and I called the law enforcement and they picked him up. But uh, I, I go, I come in of a night late, I live by myself and uh, I don't brag about it, but uh, maybe I'm better off. But uh, I, I'm just afraid maybe somebody might try to kill me. And I used to be a funeral director and I, I don't, worry about dying, I think I'm prepared to die, but still I'm, I'm going to live as long as I can. And uh, they, they come through there, and on the, on the east end of the house there, uh, as you go over the hill from where I live, they, I'm afraid to go out in the road there. I come in that way and come into my carport, I back up and come out and go out at my mailbox and go on because I'm afraid somebody come over that hill and run over me. They come over that hill of a night, I hear them coming over there, sounds like a racetrack. And, and somebody's going to get killed on it if they if they don't change the way of doing through there. They they have no regard for the speed limit or nothing. They just come through there at just whatever speed they want to come through. And and uh, then uh, things like uh, that for police protection and uh, and that because the way crime is and the way things are, I'm just real concerned about the situation there. I worked my life out of working me out of home. And uh, I, I helped a man about 30 years. And I, he, I thought he knew, didn't know nothing and I know everything, but I found out he knew more than I did. And I got to listen to what he had to tell me. And I found out he was a very intelligent man and knew more than I did. And I, I miss him every day. He's like my brother. And uh, I, I'm real concerned about that, Mr. Thank you. What I would hope, well, this. Thank you, Mr. Green. Patty Wall, Miss Wall, if you would please. And we kind of know where Brown, where do you reside? And my property adjoins the property that's going to be have the complex on. Get you pretty close. Yes, and, that, and the building is going to be right along the side of my property line. And I'm really concerned about how many people are going to be on that four and a half acres, 60 plus complex living right next door to me, which means that's more than the whole neighborhood has had. Um, the other concern I have is the traffic. You pull out of your driveway, you almost get run over. Um, and that stretch, they come around the curb, squalling their tires, and not only there. When you pull out of the Kmart shopping center to turn left to come up Rolling Mill Road, you about get creamed right there. So you have to just like hold your breath and go and pray that you make it through. I just don't know if this road can really handle the traffic that this will bring. And also I'm concerned with having that many neighbors right next to the door to me. Because it only takes one bad apple to ruin the whole thing. Thank you. Thank you, Patty. Others, maybe you didn't sign up, but we've got some time and we'd love to hear from you if you've got something to say. Yes, sir. stand up please and give us your name. Yeah, uh, Mr. Mayor, I'm Van Swall. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah. Are you uh, of the family? Yeah, uh, yeah. That's where the wall come from? I'm her husband. Uh, <laughs> I wasn't sure I was going to be able to speak tonight. I just wanted to sign up because I felt a little under the weather last 
weeks. I want to apologize. I've been lightheaded, so my thoughts might not be completely clear. But what I wanted to bring out, as my wife's already said, is uh, uh, this is a lot of people coming into this little uh, amount of uh, property. According to this, it's 4.44 acres, and there's 60, uh, 60 units. And if I read it right, I may be wrong. You can clarify this, but under Maybe the Mr. Rowland can uh, have uh, Yeah, <laughs> under the uh, UDO, when my wife brought it up on the internet, it said something about uh, that no more than ten units per acre. Uh, does that sound about right? That it could be. That might be why we're in a special use situation. But what they are, what they are asking, fans, is, is tonight that we allow under the ability of our UDO. So if if in fact this special use is granted, then they will be in conformity. It's not like they'll be outside the bounds of the but you think it's too crowded. Yeah, uh, I I've talked with Mr. Hollis a couple times. He's come out to my house a little we've had very good interchange and, and uh, spoke about it. The the reason being is as I told him, our property is right here, uh according to the first Plat he showed us there wasn't no trees here so on this updated version he even added some trees and he said the boundaries a little further over so he's trying to work with us and I appreciate that and uh, but I, I had him out to the house and I showed him what our concern, concerns were when we bought the house uh, over 13 years ago it was all single family dwellings on there on Roller Mill Road and it was even though we're that close to town it's like you're in the, the woods because there's woods all around us and you know where that little pine uh, where he's going to put it, a little pine thick it is. We got deers and everything come running out there, and, and people can't believe how close we are to town and got all that wildlife. But uh, beyond that, we sit out there on our deck, and they, either we entertain people grilling out, or either we're just laying out in the sun or something. And now, as I told Mr. Hollis, you can see from our deck right where this is going to be. This is going to be 60 units, and we're going to be the most affected out of everybody because our land is right there bordering his. And uh, that's the whole reason we bought the house when we did is we, it was all single family dwelling. Right? And I would like just to ask each and one, every one of y'all, if it was your house and you, and the reason you got it is because it was all single family there. And then you found out that now you're going to be looking at the potential 60 <laughs> units there. How would you feel? And it's going to really change life for us. And as I already mentioned, there is a traffic problem there. And uh, if anyone don't believe it, just come to uh, Kmart Shopping Center and go past Burger King and take a left and try to pull out of there. Mm -hmm. And you'll see what I'm talking about. You can't see for one thing because of the trees right there and the, and the house that's immediately right there on the road. But beyond that, people fly down that hill. And I, I, I brought up the concern before and I said, I wish they could put like some speed bumps or something there just to not tear nobody's car up, but the little small ones just to slow people down because somebody's going to get killed or hurt and it's not worth somebody's life. But um, be that as may, like I say, I know living as close as we do to town that you can't fight progress and, and eventually as close as we live, something's going to be put on this lot. There's no doubt in my mind eventually, but we were sure hoping it would be a lot further in the future than right now. And uh, that was my early concerns. Like I say, when you sit out on our deck, it's so nice and peaceful and just listen to the birds and everything. And just to know that there's going to be 60 units right next door to us. Uh, is going to change our life very drastic and as I say I just hope each and every one of y'all just think if it's your house and you had that much difference it, it's going to be a major impact to us and uh, Mr. Hollis did say he's maybe in talks with maybe even purchasing a little more land on the back side to where maybe he can have a drive coming out actually into the uh, plaza Westgate Plaza down there and that would at least give two points of entry and exit ingress and egress, however you want to word it, uh, which would help alleviate some of the traffic. But this is by no means going to be a simple uh, fix, no matter what happens. And if it does pass and, and this is put there, it's going to impact that area majorly because it will no longer be just a simple residential, single family dwelling area. It's going to, going to change the whole area. But I won't take okay, a word of your time. Thank you. Thanks, man. Anyone else? Being no further folks wanting to comment, declare the public session closed. Uh, John, 
Don't help me out, you know. I'm losing my track sometimes. We've uh, we, we've got the findings of the, of the board in evidence, so to speak. Yes, Mr. Mayor, that's that's evidence. Certainly, the, the testimony that you just received is evidence, and now it's up to the board mm -hmm. in deliberation whether to uh, how to act on. It. Yes. Sir. Okay, you heard him. I was talking to Mr. Hollis before the meeting here, and I was expressing that the biggest concern I was hearing is traffic accidents and everything, and he said he is listening to that, and before, is that correct, Hollis? You said that there would be a study? Uh, it, yes, ma'am. Um, as Mr. Grubman stated at the initial yes, neighborhood meeting, um, as a condition of us being able to get building permits, we would have to do a, a traffic study and abide by all the, the recommendations from the study. Um, I, I've listened to the neighbors, and it does seem that there, there could be a traffic issue on, on roller mill, and I don't know if it would be, I, I'm not a traffic engineer, but putting in either a three-way stop um, where the entries would be, or a stoplight, um, possibly where Westgate Plaza comes out on the roller mill, um, if the traffic study does recommend those, those additional traffic calming measures, that is something that the development would be responsible for paying. That sounds like there's a traffic problem. Well, it sounds like from mm -hmm. Mr. Green, this wall, that there is a, a traffic problem. I would hope that if, in fact, there was additional units being put out there, we'd have additional coverage to uh, more reason to have our squad cars out there a little more frequently. Oh. Does Mayor, yes. Uh, is the roller mill road, is all roller mill road in the sea? Uh, oh, no. no. I didn't think it did. It's all over the sea road. But the portion in the city limits goes up where they're talking about, I, I would hope, I think so. Yeah, that's a good point, Barrel. Can't control what's not in the limits. <laughs> Well, All of this is, the question control, is, is the road. They, they can control the apartments. The apartments are inside, are going to be inside the city. Right. So the road, the part of most of the roads, the state road is outside the Well, that's, I'll stand corrected. If the, the road mill road my portion is not in the city limits, we don't really have authority then to control it ourselves. But regardless, Mr. Hall stated, they, you know, one of the conditions are they have, do have to do the traffic study. Mm -hmm. So there's going to be an increased amount of traffic. There's, uh, an absorbent amount of traffic dropping down. I mean, everyone that, that comes through there to look up to get back on 441 have to come out of the shopping center. It's a lot easier to go road to road than it is to go back. Yeah. So there's a lot of traffic on there. It is. And they do fly. They do fly. Does it have to be 60 units? The in order to make it financially feasible for us, we had to do, go to 60 units. Um, it was the only way we could get enough revenue generated to cover the other costs that are going to be associated with the development. Um, this is our, our third year of trying to get one of these uh, properties funded um, in Franklin. Um, and the state agency keeps changing their criteria each year um, as to what's a, a winning project and what's, what's a non-winning project. Um, Currently, we've gone through the preliminary application stage uh, and we received a perfect site score. Um, in order to, to actually make it financially feasible, I guess for the long term, we had to go to 60 units. Um, it, it's kind of a, a complicated transaction, but last year we put in one uh, that was going to be 52 units and our land price was a little bit less, so we, we didn't need as many units. This year, in order to, to get a site that would score perfect, um, we had to pay a little higher price for the land, and in order to <coughs> make that work, we had to have more units. But it's kind of the, the simplified explanation. You're not going to start with 60 and come back and ask for 20 more next year, are you? No, sir. <laughs> it's always a, a problematic about there goes the neighborhood. It is. I, probably the Ordway said it whenever they built the, whenever they, they uh, Cut, yeah, whenever they cut down Magnum's Orchard and built Scott City and, and Burger King and all. I mean, it's just a product. It's a beautiful area that we live. I would hope that you would, 
if we approve it, and I sense that there's a chance that we will, that's going to be a lot of good folks are going to have a good place to live at a price they can afford, a good, clean, suitable housing close into town to good locations and, and all. And maybe there'd be some mighty good folks move in there that might ease some of the steam of having folks move in beside you. But, you know, you could only control your own land, that's for sure, because people who own their own land that paid for it, paid their taxes, have a right to, to the best use of it. And that's what's happening in this situation, a request that a, a landowner be able to use his land, his or her land, to the maximum uh, ability. Now, I have a question. Uh, I was looking at the contour lines, and it looks like there's an awful lot of fall on this property. Uh, which is going to require, looks to me like, a lot of earth movement. We are. That, uh, sorry, if that being the case, uh, I don't see anything here about stormwater runoff. Yes, sir, please. So there is going to be a, a good bit of earth moving. Um, it is going to be a balanced site, um, so we're not actually bringing any fill or, or removing anything. And as part of our contracts uh, with the property owners from Westgate Plaza uh, Limited Partners, um, their stormwater retention pond is oversized, and they're, as part of the contract, they have agreed to accept our stormwater into the, the stormwater management plan for the, the shopping center. Where is that retention pond? Behind Lowe's? Behind Lowe's and it's, it's right here. Behind Jingles? The angles would be here. Okay. So this is right here. Okay. I didn't know there was one back there. Okay. Yeah. So in other words, you're going to do it right. Yes, sir. We have to. Yes, sir. Um, there are a number of agencies and, and different groups that will be monitoring everything that we do on site. Other questions? No, and I understand because I certainly understand the security feeling of insecurity of strangers moving in, but I understand everybody who is applying to live in that building is going to go through a complete security check. Is that correct? Uh, yes, ma'am. We have a, a very exhaustive credit and criminal background policy uh, in order to, to move into the property. Um, in addition to that, something that we've started incorporating over the past three years um, is a, a camera system um, that includes <coughs> all of the public areas within the property. And it's actually an internet-based uh, system where the police department can actually log in uh, over the internet, and it records up to 72 hours of everything that's happened on site. Uh, we've actually found that that's been a very good deterrent. With large signs that say, you know, you're under video surveillance if you're on this property. Um, we've seen that to be a very good deterrent, and also as a, a very good way to uh, stop any type of problems that could be happening. That property would be under brown or green surveillance. I'm oh, sorry, you say, say again, sir. <laughs> <coughs> Mr. Mayor, can I yes, ask sir. something? If, if, if he's talking about the check of those people, now they're not going to check the first few that checks in there and then just get the word about three or four years, they're going to forget it and just rent it to whoever comes along. Mm -hmm. We I, sure I, hope not. Well, I, I do too.
suggested that the DOT was going to be doing some traffic studies, so we as the town would certainly have standing to be involved in that study to get, give them our concerns about our residents who are coming out. How long are you planning? When do you plan to? You got the bulldozers backed out there? No, sir. Um, we were waiting to find out if we get funding first, uh, which would be in August. Um, as part of the conditions I had with Mr. Gruberman, we were required to do a traffic study before we could pull any building permits. So, or before we could do anything else you know, beyond this, this part. Will you keep us informed of when that track study is supposed to? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, will, will they have to come back before the board for more approvals on this? I don't believe so. this be it? This is it. I believe this is it as long as they meet the criteria as they move yeah. along with the DOT and the other Allocation for water and sewer? No, well, that's going to be handled subsequently. The water and sewer committee is going to meet with Hollis to go over the request and all that. We'll make a recommendation this month back to the board. When they do, when they do, it's going to be a traffic study. Is it up to us? Yeah, I think it's probably 
devices. Mm -hmm. He has to do that, or he can't get permits. Yeah, he can't get permits. Can't build it. Make it advice to help. I, I can make it an agreement to bring the traffic study back in and go through it at a, a later council meeting. That's my biggest concern. Okay. It, it, it's been the traffic. And, uh, I will, I, do you have to have this approval before you went for the traffic service? service? That, that was that was the idea was to have this approval. Um, we didn't want to spend the extra dollars to do the traffic study if the project wasn't going to move forward. That was the, the idea. Okay. Anyone else keep on this one? So if something were to have a snag for you, yes, then of course we would proceed. Well, it's all we do there. It's all contingent upon them being able to go yeah. through right. and take care of the other. Get the loan. Right. Right. Okay. What we're going to do here, we're going to take about five minutes, just about a five minute break. All right. Get back to business, public session. Now, I'm getting too many, too much stuff here for these computers. Amazing. Kevin, till it. Is this you here to speak about what issue? Um, basically, to get on the sewer line on Old Murphy Road. Um, well, isn't that an agenda? That's, 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 we'll get to it. Okay. We'll get to it. Anybody else on public session? Okay. Dave, Lynn. I, Work you in. Uh, Tommy Jenkins called on your behalf, so I thought I'd go ahead, stand up and tell us what you're begging for. No, I'm not begging for money tonight. Don't worry. No, all, all I'm asking from the you guys tonight is I'm hosting the Braveheart 5K, which last year we had 144 people. This year I'm asking to close down Stewart Street where the race will end, and we'll have the Braveheart Brew Tasting. This will take place at Taste of Scotland because, as you know, with Taste of Scotland gone. We have lots of people coming in town. If they don't see something happening, they're never going to come back here again. So this with the Braveheart Brew Tasting at the end of Stewart Street. We'll have the heartbeat still in town. We'll have people wandering around town, excited still to be here. So that's what I'm asking tonight. If y'all could help us out by allowing us to close Stewart Street from 10 to about 4.30 oh, on Stuart, June 16th. Oh, Stewart Street. Yes. It dead ends right down behind us, back this way. So. Yes, I mean, you want it from the... Um, we, from the uh, uh, tower. Yeah, yes, from the uh, down to the dead end. From Phillips to the oh, okay. yes. Same thing you did last yes, year. Yes, sir. Yes, um, the, the, the the area. But this time it will be the Brave Art Brew Tasting will take place at the end of the street behind Outdoor Seventy Six. After, after 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 the race, yes. You can't do it before. But if you want to drink, summer. if you want to drink a couple of beers before, you go for it. <laughs> what is what is the Brave Art Brew Tasting? The it's a um, beer tasting, uh, beer coffee, tasting. and tea tasting, and so it's more than things. It's, it's, I mean, because as we all know, the taste Scotland without gone, you're going to lose thousands of people that are coming to town. Like I said, last year we had 144 people. This year, I'm expecting over 200 runners, and they're bringing their families. So if there's nothing for them to do, they're going to get back in the cars and leave. So if we don't have something for them to do, they'll 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 stay around here if they have something to do. They'll stay on Stewart Street, but also too they'll wander up Main Street, and we'll have sidewalk sales, everything. I'm gonna work with the town, all the town businesses, to try to have something going on. So I don't want to see the um, people just get in their cars and leave and say, "Hey, Franklin has nothing going on." So why would we ever come back? Well, I, I took part in it last year. I watched them. <laughs> you, you took a part, but now this year you got to run, right? You got to run it. I'm sending my wife. <laughs> you got somebody representing. Yeah. What day was that in? It's going to be June 16th, it, the same as traditionally as the Taste Scotland weekend. Okay. And like I said, the race will be, at, um, it will start out front here. It'll be from 8.30, so we're looking at 8.30 to about 5, really. But Stewart Street would be the one area that would be closed down for that, from 10 to 4. So. I make a, yeah. If the discussion is finished, I make a motion that we uh, honor the request to close Stewart Street for Bray Park. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor, raise your hand. All opposed, good. Thank you folks, appreciate it. See y'all on June 16th. <laughs> request for municipal sewer allocation. Sam, tell us what we got here. This is the uh, 
property as you can tell by the attached letter from, uh, from Paul Higdon where the uh, what used to be known as the Bowman Clinic on Old 64 West and the proposal is to turn that into a daycare facility with, I believe Paul's letters had up to 120 children and they're asking for the equivalent, well, for uh, an allocation of 1,800 gallons of sewage per day. Now, of course, everybody knows that the moratorium is still in place west of town due to the sewer capacity issue. But the, the line itself project, the construction project, is very close, and we know we've heard this for 12 years, very close, close to being completed, but nonetheless, when it is, the moratorium will be lifted. And um, as part of another factor is that on Old 64 West, as part of the shakeout for having the new force main on, uh, coming from the industrial park, down the Golden Mill Road and into town, is that the town will be reversing the flow on the sewer line, the force main. So in other words, it'll be pumping out from Presley Road to Bridhaven to go into the gravity line. And of course, as part of that, there aren't that many people left on the sewer line, and extra flow is going to be helpful. So uh, we would certainly recommend that it be considered, but what this amounts to is if the board approval on the allocation is dependent on the moratorium being lifted and on the rest of the project going forward. And uh, Paul and the property owners are here to speak to it as well. We've got the, the line that there's no more for and we've got the capacity. Correct. And we've been hunting and the whole community has been supporting a private business daycare center. And so and I think it's be, important. This will be all the state government's Where is this actually located there? Well, I'm going to be. Oh, okay. Never mind. I'm with you now. We have to do something to say. Yeah, it would be great to see that building come to life. Yeah, it's been a long time. Who's got the motion? Yeah. Well, no, it's just, it's an allocation. The town would be granting the allocation pending those other things happening. Okay. Uh, basically, it's just approves an allocation of 1,800 gallons of sewerage per day. You got it now? I think so. Yeah. 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 All in favor, raise your hand. Go forward and prosper. Good luck. Yes. Asbestos abatement proposal for the Whitmire House. No, I don't care. It's handled for us. It's reported to the board for Mayor Lyce uh, session. We did uh, complete an inspection on the Whitmire property. So the space is complete. I got a from Neo Corporation, which is included in uh, your packet. I got a quotation from them, which is quite extensive. It's quite extensive the amount of asbestos, including floor tile, elastic, uh, drywall, joint, textured ceiling services, floor tiles, transits, uh, shingles, as well as covered on some of the block and stuff. Uh, the uh, quotation, like I said, it was, was quite extensive. As far as their actual removal of this, it is a material that is considered friable, and friable means that when they remove it, it becomes airborne, which requires a lot of additional uh, health concern for the workers, and they're kind of in case, but like in a balloon, they have to hold it in. I talked with Berlin Curtis on the uh, Curtis this morning, and we apparently the town originally had someone look at it 10, 15 years ago, 10 years ago, whatever was on it, and they uh, had given a quotation that was quite lower than what we've got here. They had agreed to take the in, the inspection report that we have in our hands now because we have completed inspection and we have paid for it. 
they're going to take that and go back and take a look at it and give us another quote. Uh, if I have negotiated a 10% reduction in the one we got, but that's still quite a lot of money. Uh, the material to, or to abate it, and that would only remove the asbestos once the asbestos is gone and get a, a clear report of the house and the fire department can burn the house down and that rid of the rest of it. And then where well, Sam's working on getting the rock that's over there on the removed. And I've also met the gentleman that's maybe interested in working on the rock to take it off and say that's a good answer. Is all the wood and everything that the doors and all that start coming in on the house? It's entirely true. Yeah, but I said if we, we just gone. if we just turned it ahead for a little while more, the whole place might be gone. We wanted to worry about it. Yeah. <laughs> Most of the oh. salvageable metal on the it's already gone. <coughs> All right, thanks for that report. So anyhow, I, I'm not asking for a decision on it now. We'll table it for now, and I'm working on a second quotation for the new in the paper. So. Thank you for that work, Carol. J and B disposal franchise extension, John. Uh, Mr. Mayor, as the board is aware, um, <clears throat> the town's franchise for collection removal of uh, solid waste uh, garbage has uh, been granted for quite some time to J and B disposal. Um, Ms. Hampshire has asked for a uh, an extension of that. This is uh, so it's before the board is a resolution to make a similar extension to the one that the town order granted in 2007 of an additional five years on the franchise that'll have it run through 2021. Um, uh, Ms. Hampshire's agreed to re-execute uh, just an acknowledgement of the terms of the original contract and the guarantee um, and so it would be my recommendation if it's the will of the board to vote to extend the, the franchise an additional five years. So the franchise now is set to be in 2016, I believe. 2016. 2016. 2016. So we've, we've historically granted five years at a time. Well, in 2007, she asked for an additional five years, and that was on a 2001 contract. So you, it's it's legal to grant them for 30 years oh. on, a, on a solid waste collection franchise. Bonnie, Bonnie and I have this ongoing conversation is I mean, it's a great business decision they do they never let the franchise in before they come and say they have to have collateral for the loan and they keep extending it out it, it's it's been effective but this will put it all the way to 2021 yes they do good work they do marvelous work and their help is goes out of their way in my neighborhood for helping people well, they're really very polite You know, if competition is going to come next week and ask to get in, is that from beating the competition line? <laughs> I'm trying real hard to say I have anything. Good job. Like, oh. <laughs> now, I have a question or a comment. I, you know, I continue. I remember when the board looked at this years ago before I was ever on the board, and I've read through the franchise agreement, and I know you mentioned in there anything to do with recyclables. And, but do you have any plan whatsoever in the future getting into recyclables? I would love to get into recycles. It's just uh, recycling. It's just, um, and I had talked to the town prior to this a few years ago about, and had given Mike Decker some numbers as to the cost of buying a truck and operating. And at that time, I told Mike, unless it was a mandatory thing, it would not be feasibly economic, you know, economically feasible for me. Um, there is a company now, it's called Alley Cat, and I have just recently started looking into this. It's a little tow behind a trailer versus a truck. And if that's something that I could you know, purchase and if it would work, it would be a lot more economical and it would not require a mandatory recycle. Uh, and so the economy is right now, people are opting to carry their own trash, carry their own recycles. And, um, but I'm certainly not leaving this 
you know, unapproached. So. Hey, on the uh, on the recycling, if uh, if it were mandated, uh, and and what you would use is different colored bags for the recycling is. is well, there's containers, there's bags. You know, there are many mm -hmm. options mm -hmm. to go but with. If the town did not mandate it, there would be no point in doing it. How do you enforce the mandate? Well, it's usually done on the tax roll. Mm -hmm. So. Well, that's, that's something I think the board needs to look at is, is recycling. So that doesn't have anything to do with tonight, right. does it? The <laughs> county has mandates mm -hmm. now in place. I mean, it, 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 mm -hmm. you're not supposed to throw your you're plastic bottles to. and stuff like that away. I mean, they're not mm -hmm. going through garbage to see whose names in there. Well, you know, right but it's still, it's, yeah. it's the people still can be held accountable. And the town subscribes to that ordinance. Yes. Town, both towns are parts of that and the, and the county is getting better. I mean, they now a lot of the stuff you take out to the big bailer and they actually sort it out on the spot. So, you know, we're getting there. I think statewide, the county's ranks high, but we all know it's, we're still just getting people scratching the surface on what we could do. You know, a lot of towns have containers you do, but those are the ones who provide the order services that we're going to get it off and we, since we don't have to do that, yeah. Billy, is she going to, is the blonde going to get away here? I move that we extend. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor, raise your hand. Keep doing good work. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Warren, you here? Yes, sir. What'd you come in? Finally, Big Red Car Strip. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we were all I'm not sure what kind of propaganda you heard from the manager before I got here. We were all waiting for the fire truck. I apologize. It's all right. I was going to take a ride. We, we actually had a call of 20 after 6 that required all the time, so I, we had to, <laughs> business had to take a little break. Uh, the new truck is actually out back if we hear the end of the meeting. If you don't get a seat tonight, please let me know and drop by the firehouse. I'll give you the personal tour choice if you'd like to. I may even let you sit in the seat. Uh, and if that doesn't work, I'll bring it back to the next meeting and make sure y'all get a good look at it. But real reason I'm here tonight, Sam asked me to come by to update you on our uh, rating and response uh, inspection that we got coming up. And most of you know by now, we actually thought it would be scheduled for October, and the state actually signed us a date the last week in June. Uh, it's scheduled the week of June 25th, 26th, and 27th. Uh, and basically an overview of what's going to happen those days. Uh, the first day will be at basically all paperwork and record keeping and review of our records. Uh, the second day, which is the Tuesday, we'll finish the paperwork, they'll inspect our equipment, and then up into the night that night, about six o'clock that night, we'll do some practical exercises with our Franklin folks uh, to prove what we can do and what we can't do and what our capabilities are. Uh, and then we'll have another busy day on the 27th, which is a Wednesday, that's the day that all our mutual aid companies, uh, the outline volunteer fire departments will have to help us on all these calls, have to come in and actually go through a practical exercise with us. So we intend to, to do that early that morning since that's gonna be June, get that accomplished, hopefully feed them lunch and then send them on their way. And then we'll wrap up any loose ends with us that afternoon on Wednesday and hopefully be finished by then. Uh, you can expect to know the number that we get back within about 60 days. So about the 1st of September, we'll know what that is. Uh, at least by then, uh, and then the rates will actually go into effect about 90 <coughs> days after that. So probably no later than the 1st of December, whatever new rate we get will be in effect for all the, uh, the people that are not just in the city limits, but the people that we actually serve outside in the rural district as well. So hopefully that'll be a nice Christmas present for those folks that everything goes well that they can save a little on their insurance. A um, couple of things that we're doing right now to, to make sure we're ready. Obviously we have some new apparatus, and if you've ever doubted the decision that you've made, I can tell you that we did make one right, one one that was correct. Uh, if you remember, we were discussing taking bids on some apparatus, and it would be probably August or September before they were delivered. And obviously, had we went that route and not chosen the stock trucks that we did, they wouldn't be here in June. So we would not have had the equipment to do well on this inspection. So if you ever think you made a correct decision, that was one that we made, thank goodness. Lucky decision, I think. <laughs> Educated decision. A um, couple other things we've done. We, we have to inspect all our rural water points. If we do them twice a year, we get maximum points, and we have all of those inspected as of now. We've actually motor around most of those and taking care of those. Uh, you have six hydrant zones in the city. 
Uh, as of about uh, four o'clock today, we have four of them complete, and about half of the fifth one's done. So we'll we'll be right on track to have those inspected and complete. Uh, we just service test our, tested our apparatus. They have to go through a pump test. We just did that to make sure they're all up to par. Uh, we have to test hose. We have that scheduled for May 21st. So we, we've tried to make sure we get everything in order to get all the points we can possibly get out of this. We've been practicing with our folks. Uh, we've been practicing with our mutual aid companies. We had a multi-company drill last Thursday, uh, practicing hauling water. And our whole focus is hauling water and doing well on this, this inspection on Thursday nights between now and June. Uh, and my folks, any additional training they're going to do tonight, they're doing some ventilation training down at the, uh, the motel uh, downtown. They decided they wanted to come in and do it on a different night so we didn't actually mess up our Thursday night uh, training for this inspection. Uh, we're also, we've, we've got a few updates to make on our hydrant maps uh, to make sure that we get all the, the latest and greatest water lines in because that's a big part of, of what we're graded on is the size of water lines. Uh, the number of hydrants and the location of those hydrants. And we had to make sure we had the river bend extension in there to make sure we got all the credit for those down through there. Uh, and then the other thing is our training. And um, something I'm pretty proud of, we, we've got, uh, as of the 1st of May, actually the last week in April, we had over 3,000 hours of training, um, which for 30 folks is a lot. The average is about 100 hours a person. Uh, State of North Carolina says you have to have 36. Uh, Franklin Fire Department says you have to have 80. Uh, so most of those folks are well above and beyond what we even require and we've still got two months to go and we've still got about a month's worth of paperwork to back up so we'll be bumping the 4,000 hour uh, training requirement um, most paid fire departments if you went to charlotte fire department or Asheville fire department and looked at their training probably the maximum they're going to have 7200 hours they expect 240 hours a year out of their folks so we're we're well into the half of that so we're only having 10% paid staff and 27 volunteers. I thought that said a lot about our folks and the, the dedication they're putting in there. But I think the other thing Sam wanted me to come tonight was to reassure you that, that we're in good shape. Um, we have some loose ends to tie down. We've got a lot of paperwork put together to make sure that everything comes together in a very organizable format. But I'm actually pretty comfortable with where we're at and what we've got going on. And uh, I think hopefully we'll do well. Does anybody have any questions? You, uh what number are we at right now? You are a six inside the city limits or within a thousand feet of a hydrant and you're a nine out in the rural. Lower's better? Lower's better. What is reasonably, what is our goal to? Uh, Highlands just went through the same inspection. Uh, they came up with a four inside the city limits and a five in the rural. Uh, so their rural was mm -hmm. actually better than our city rating right now. Um, they have one thing going for them is their district is very large. It's, the, the city park is a very large part of their district. So they have a lot of hydrants. Um, we actually, probably the one area we have that concerns me a little bit without hydrant access is Holly Springs, uh, which we've got to rely a lot on our rural water points out there. But I think um, I, I seven is a gimme in the rural. I, I, I think that's we show up we'll get a seven i think a six is very very probably 95 percent possible uh if we do very well we might scratch a five in the world but i would be extremely happy with a six if we had a six and we're at a nine mm -hmm. somebody's paying a thousand dollars a year now mm -hmm. with a nine about how much probably say them without looking at the house hundred thousand dollar home is probably 150 dollars 200 dollars a year on homeowner's insurance okay so we're talking right. probably now that the city also will help you um, once you get to a six you're a six now in the city uh, dropping below a six the rates really don't change much for your residential customers uh, that depends on the insurance company but not a lot where it really helps you is your commercial customer where the big industries if you can drop from six to a five you will save an industry a lot of money on your insurance uh, because they keep saving money all the way down to you get to a one Anybody at one? Uh, <coughs> it's Greensboro, Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. Myrtle Beach. Yeah, there's two or three. Yeah, we got the ocean. <laughs> 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 Thank you. We probably won't be that good. We'll try. Any further questions? Yeah. Uh, is there any issue that we're going to have to deal with the Department of Water Resources and the Department of Water Resources? Yeah. Is there any issues as far as uh, I know we had quite a few hydrants that you were working on in town of Lake? Do we have? Do you have any? issues if we corrected all of that. Jay has been very receptive about correcting those. One of the things we really wanted to do, we wanted to paint them, but they actually, the paint actually, believe it or not, that has nothing to do with inspection. Um, as long as it works and everything's in function order, they're okay with it. So 
unfortunately, due to time constraints, we're probably not going to get them painted before they show up. But Jay has been very receptive about fixing those, and we, we've had very good luck. Okay. Good. As long as one year my house is working really good. I'm really, I'm really pleased with everything they're doing for Seriously. My, my folks have really done well. They, they, they've done well going together. So I'm actually, I'm pretty proud of those folks. Yeah. A lot of hard work going for everybody. Yeah, it's, it, it's hard to believe that just the changes just in the point in our interest rate, which we hope to change several points down. We're talking about hundreds of thousand dollars worth of premium savings for the taxpayer, both the city and the county. Mm -hmm. What I'll do once it's significant. Yes. Once I get those numbers, we'll try and pull some structure numbers and come up with a good guess on what that actually means to mm -hmm. folks. Once we get those numbers, so when I come back to you with the with the numbers, hopefully in August or whenever I finally get the numbers back, I'll try and have some financial numbers to back that up so people really understand what that's worth. I know before we dropped the six, some of the largest industries in there, we were talking about thirty thousand dollars a year. Is that when you got your raise? <laughs> Who was that when you got your raise out there? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And actually, we're set insurance up to a million dollars. So. Okay. <laughs> and did have a, did have a cast okay. Thank you, Warren. Thanks, Warren. All right, that's Thank good, you. Warren. Thank you. All right, let's move on to agenda item 11, the Nequasi Indian Mound. Bob, let's get your name on it. Okay. Uh, <coughs> I saw in the Smoky Mountain News that uh, Chief Hicks of Cherokee mm -hmm. had uh, called for the town to apologize for the poisoning of the grass on the mound. And uh, I uh, have a, I'm, I'm not sure whether you would call it a formal apology or just a letter to the chief expressing uh, our regret at what happened, uh, not pointing any fingers. But uh, here's what I propose. I think you all got a copy of it. Uh, that the town of Franklin sincerely regrets the situation regarding the killing of grass on the Nisquasi Mound. The town apologizes for what has taken place. It's hoped that in light of what happened, it will open a new dialogue between the Eastern Band of Cherokee Indians and the town of Franklin to further talk and activities to preserve this ancient site. The town recognizes the historic and cultural value of the Quasi Mound and will continue to preserve and protect it in perpetuity. The town also invites appointment by the chief and or the tribal council of members of the tribe to become members of the town's mound committee to offer suggestions and to be a part of any activities involving the mound. And I guess I should say future activities. And I will put that in the form of a motion to send such a letter to Chief Hicks and Tropical Council. Any second? Any, any discussion in general before we get to a motion we might work out better? I have a question. Was there actually a letter or are we just listening to <coughs> media stuff? Is there a letter? Do you have a copy of a letter? I do not. I have not seen one.
to the people and to the group. And they, and the school children, people in town, people out of town, people out of the country, sent pennies and money to buy that land, and it was bought for $1,500. And it was given to the town of Franklin, at that particular meeting to the town of Franklin, at that particular time. And that's actually the start of the historical side of society, which is the, uh, was the Quasi Foundation. And um, so I just have problems. I just don't think um, we did anything disrespectful. I think it's a matter of um, trying to find something to go that um, our powers to be were trying to find something to go on that line that would be suitable. And yes, there was a committee, but I understood at the time that the committee had not met for quite a while. That's, so, that's my, my opinion. That's, well, I don't think that's material. We got two well, issues. We, we okay. got, I mean, there's, there's two separate issues. Okay. Procedurally, uh, there's a lot of reasons why we maybe took some wrong or quick decisions. However, decisions were made, and this is where we're at right now. And if, in fact, the desire to get the mound to what would be considered a more stable setting, requiring less maintenance, less wear and tear, required killing grass so that new grass could be could grow, it didn't struck, jump out to me as being an affront or an, an indignity to the mound, and certainly not to the, to the eastern band, of which, of course, I'm very well connected or related to as well. And so I do not, I hope it's not an issue really of strong sentiment to the tribe in general. I'm over there on a regular basis and I haven't picked up on it in particular. Uh, but I am, uh, I'm satisfied that, that, that the mail belongs to Franklin, that we've been good stewards of it, and that it really is our decision to make because uh, it is under our, our ownership, but I certainly don't want to lock out, lock out any opportunity to uh, to work with the uh, Eastern Band because certainly there's some land there with the mound that we have, we have looked at from time to time to see if we could pull together a bigger project involving a park type setting, and we really hadn't gotten a lot of good feedback from the Eastern Band. Maybe if we try to re-stimulate that, that hopefully to bring them to the table because they're our friends. They certainly are. Well, that was pretty much the purpose of my uh, 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 letter, apology, whatever you want to call it, was to try to get the, uh, if, 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 if there's anything about this that hasn't hurt anything, it has brought the issue of the mound into the public eye. Uh, does not an apology by its very nature make you think, well, I shouldn't have done it? No, sir. No, sir. Mm -hmm. I don't think there's been anything, I don't think anybody in particular said that there was anything disrespectful about it. Uh, I think there's another, excuse me, go ahead. No, go ahead. It was in the paper. I know that. that was in the paper. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think that, uh, that the letter is pointing out in any way that this was disrespectful. What happened? Do we have any other discussion? Bob, do you want to renew your motion? Yeah, I renew the motion as 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 read that uh, we send this uh, note to the chief and the tribal council. Uh, unless somebody wants to reword it, that'd be my motion. There a second. That motion does not stand for lack of a second. Any other business? Uh, I don't think that seconds are required anymore, Mr. Mayor. I, I have a uh, <laughs> Wait, wait, Bob. No, no, really. No, I, I think you're right. Uh, I think you're right. So it's got to come to a vote. Okay. Uh, I, I've, I've read. read is it not in the procedure? I don't know. I've read. I've read somewhere that seemed to be fairly. Uh, they're Just not required as a matter of state. No, law. they're not. They're not. No, they're but, not. I, but I think they are in your. I think they're in your procedure. It has to have a second. I think so. I'll I'll check. But Bob, you just went on here. 
But if it does, nobody wants to second. That's kind of where we should have come. It's a little obvious that that's mm -hmm. the case. Okay. But for now, we're going to act as if you need a second unless Don tells us otherwise. Any other on this agenda? I'm, I'm, what do you got there? Uh, I move that, that, uh, that no apology be considered by the board for this. Um, and this may need to be in two, two separate motions. But I'm also going to move that the town attorney uh, look into an ordinance that would ban all foot traffic and everything from the mound other than uh, maintenance crews, town crews, that sort of thing, or uh, something, some kind of special event or something that was approved by the town board. Uh, I think we've already had a motion that we put the echo, echo grass on it. Mm -hmm. No, that's not what we, we need to get. No, we need to take care of that too. I uh, understood uh, we've, already, we've already done that, which we've done. Yeah. It, that's part of the motion too. Uh, and I think at this point, we just need to, uh, uh, we need to dissolve the mound committee. And so all of that's my motion. Mr. Mayor, it is written in the, the board's uh, procedures and that a motion yeah. shall require that. Let, let me ask the board this. Would you be more comfortable with the mounted committee if I were not on it? That sounded a little pointed towards the board to dissolve the mounted committee. That being the case, I'll just step down from the mounted committee. Let's take these uh, one at a time, Bill. If we don't move forward on Bob's motion, then by the very next one, we won't be issuing the policy. I don't know if it needs a special motion that we not issue the policy if we're not voting to issue the policy. I mean, does that make, do you see where I'm going with that? Yeah. The next step, though, would be you would want Don to uh, maybe propose some legislation, some ordinance which would have the effect of prohibiting foot traffic on it without basically prior approval right. of the on that motion, is any discussion for John? Is, is this to prevent foot traffic on the mound? Is this done solely, especially if we're going to put the new ego grass on it? What the whole idea is to keep even maintenance personnel off of it, unless you know, we need to get on there to, to mm -hmm. patch an area. Is this is why we mm -hmm. want to prevent protect. people from being on it, just to protect. provide better protection? Mm -hmm. okay. And the motion this time is just for John Henning to work on getting us some proposed wording for us to review and see if it's right. Not necessarily to vote on what it brings back. Right, okay. right. Yeah. I'll Any discussion on that motion? Can we get a point of clarification? Was the motion adjusted? The motion that right now I think is before the board is just for John Henning to come up with some proposed ordinance language regarding foot traffic without prior approval of the the town. Like the the grass or we're not there yet. That's another one. Yeah. We're not, we're not, we're not, I'm breaking right. them down. Okay. okay. Uh, is it open for discussion? Yes. Wait, there's been a motion. Is there, in barrel, you second. I second. So yes, open for discussion. Define on the mail. It may be the that was one John. I'm thinking the mail proper. I'm thinking the mail proper, but that can be part of it. Would that be a part of the interpretive sign? I think you should, in personally, walk around the mail and read the signs and stuff as much as you want to. That's what I would think. Is anybody thinking different? Well, the ego grass is going to be on the mound itself when it starts up from the grass. So there's which, still which areas kill, to walk right? around where mm -hmm. people stop and take the dead zones. Mm -hmm. such as that. The the dead zone. Okay. The dead zone. Okay. Now that will be right. The dead zone. No, the dead zone. It was dead zone. Oh, really? <laughs> the brown zone. <laughs> the brown zone. I'm talking brown zone. Right? Yeah. I think that was original. Okay. Yeah. 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 I think so. Yeah. Well, that's always been what the mound committee said. It's never buried. Okay, so we've got a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor, raise your hand. Opposed? 
Okay. The next one is what, the abolition of the committee. I think that I think that needs to happen. I'd yes. <coughs> like to explain why I do it. There's so many things that, that, that goes on and it seems that with with things of this nature it needs to be handled within the building, uh, within, within the board itself. Uh, I, I don't I don't think people ought to be able to go out on their own uh, and, and solicit and, and do things. I think that's is there anyone on this board who says that I have not kept you informed of what the Maryland Committee was doing? I have emailed after every meeting, every one of them. Every one of them. Anybody want to dispute that? What? Was the last name? It was some, quite a while back. So see, see, that's not the issue. Well, but I don't think we need it now. That's my okay. thing. You don't think we need it? I don't, I don't, I don't think we need the mail committee. I think this is take, taking care of it, putting the rice on it, keeping the people off of it, end the discussion. There's a lot more that can be done with the mail. If, if, the there, is, if there, the there is, it needs to be done by the board. Billy, the mail committee never took any action that has not been brought before the board. Well, we can take again. action anyway. <laughs> and we can't take action, that's correct. Well, that's, that's just my motion. And I respect that motion. Uh, there's a motion. Second. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor, raise your hand. Opposed? Oh, that passes. Now, let's talk about the eco grass. Somebody tell us what we're going to do. I, thought we already decided that we were I don't think the board has ever ratified or otherwise to put their stamp of approval on it. We need to? I, I would like to vote the full board on something like this. If we're going to make decisions yeah. regarding the mound, yeah. we'll award out. I think we're doing it. The, we the board has been yeah. informed about the, the process of putting it on there, and we have five favorable responses and one. It's fair to say negative uh, It was, but it was after the fact. Yeah. Well, of course it's after the fact, because I didn't I mean, work with them. You, 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 it, we were told you're going to do it after it was done. It's not been done yet. The eco grass has I know, but the grass is dead, and right. the plan is in place. Well, correct. The, the grass has to be, I mean, if you're going to put the eco grass on, but the grass has to be, has to be dead. Well, and, yeah. and, you know, where it won't continue to germinate. Is the eco grass any different than the astro turf that somebody said I did? Yeah. <laughs> Thanks to me, put on yeah. the mound. <laughs> uh, yes, Are you offering the substitute? I'm turf. offering now that we go with the original plan in the, the astro one's turf. Artificial yes. one's not. Mm. My take is, is that it's the most conservative approach that we can take at this point in time. It's not that expensive. It's not that burdensome to do. If the board later decides that maybe uh, they want to add to it or otherwise change it, it's not like we've done a huge investment. We're not digging big holes, planting big trees, or otherwise disturbing the mound. So I'm not pleased that we're here procedurally. We jumped the gun, I believe, but we are here. And so we've got to accept that. And so I think this eco grass is, I, I, I don't know of a, personally a better alternative right now, so I think we should go be in lockstep or at least have a, a formal vote to do that. I make a motion we put in legal grass. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor, raise your hand. Opposed? Any other matters relative to the Indian now tonight? Sam, you got us a report from WK Dixon Water Study. Uh, what we're proposing, and uh, we've reviewed this, the Water and Sewer Committee, about the proposed contract, is that we need to have a water study as part, this would be the initial part of the phase of applying, eventually, probably several years down the road, but applying for expansion of the water plant. But this is a necessary first step. Now, we've talked to W.K. Dixon about the proposal, the, the uh, 
schedule of work to be achieved in the study. And as far as the funding on it, um, W.K. Dixon has agreed to bill this in the next fiscal year, but to go ahead and start work as soon as possible, which essentially would be to start work in June. Uh, it's going to take probably six months worth of work for the minimum to prepare the report, vet it, bring it back to the board for future discussion. Uh, it's a long-term process, and, but it is an essential first step. Now, the price on it is expensive. <coughs> but you're, you're, you're building in a quality for the review that's going to be occurring in Raleigh whenever the town does decide to do an application for expanding the water plant. So, uh, water and sewer committee has met, signed off on it. Billy, really speak to it as you wish, but I think we're ready to go. Yeah, um, it's, it's already been. <coughs> For this, but right now we're kind of stopped with everything. We've got a lot of projects going on, but there's going to be once the, once the new sewer line uh, gets online and we get the moratorium sewer moratorium lifted on one side, we're going to have a lot of people that's going to be asking to pick up. We're going to have uh, hopefully the economy is going to pick up. We're going to have a lot of folks in the water service too. We need to make some long-term plans as to as to what the expansion is going to be, where we're going, uh, how we're going to take it, and exactly um, how much reserve we do have now. Uh, so this is just this is going to go a long ways to helping us uh, do our policies for. for <coughs> how, how long did W.K. Dixon have to prepare this proposal? How much effort did it take them to come up with this? That's been about three months in process for the scope of work to be refined and worked out. And we did that in relationship to what we knew or projected that the state would be requiring as far as possible down the road to make it relevant without having to come back and do a minimum to it. Is there no reason why we're not getting a second proposal to compare? 80,000 is quite a bit. It is quite a bit. Uh, Wondering why we haven't given other opportunities. I mean, there's more than just a couple. I'm not really <coughs> suggesting. I mean, there's several people or companies who would be willing and want to bid on something like this. If we were not under a time constraints, why would we take the first one at their first price? Well, a lot of it had to do with evaluating you know, prior studies that have been done and their reception at the state. Now, that will eliminate some companies and. You know, hey. if you got a, <laughs> hey. yeah. if you got a, a modest product as opposed to a superior product, you want the superior product, and yeah. it's a qualitative and it's a qualitative decision. It's not really a dollar and cents decision. It's the quality of the work and how it's received in Raleigh that we view as the most important issue. Admittedly, there may be a difference of some dollars in the you know, what you would get from a selection of companies. But I, I think the Water and Sewer Committee, and I certainly am, sold on the product that we can be guaranteed of getting from W.K. Dixon. That's the issue. It's quality. Well, and and, which, and which, usefulness. Which, which we're hoping it comes out, because we haven't seen the product. <coughs> yeah, what we're basing it on is review of products that they've done for other uh, municipalities. 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 So at this point, that's the recommendation to go on ahead with it because we can be assured that this study will eventually receive good reception by Dina and the folks in the knowledge that review these applications. And that's you know, the context for the recommendation. So everybody that's been, you've talked to all the different municipalities and been very, very pleased with everything. We've got done. a work list. Uh, studies that have been done from W.K. Dixon in the past five years and sampled and followed up on and uniformly favorable as far as yeah. They have a very high reputation for the model as well. You're paying to a certain extent for access in the model, tacitly admitted, that if you send a superior product from a recognized company in Raleigh, it really makes life easier. Mm -hmm. So I think it's 
worth the money, even if we're overpaying for it. You don't have to say that. You don't have to say that. I've been accused of being too blunt. In, in defense of this, we really need this part of that. Well, we've got to get started yeah, somewhere. We're, we're really ready with, with all the expansion and stuff we do. And this will also form the basis for some time down the road opening up conversations with the county about water and sewer capacity outside the, the town service <laughs> areas and uh, discuss I mean, about a, growth needs. And this will be a pleasure. Yeah. 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 This will be a good product for the town and the county to look at. We want to ask the county to help us pay for it. What do you think? Bring forward or something? I think so. That way we got bragging rights. Motion. Move and reach that. Second. Any discussion? Got the yes. Uh, just update me real fast. To be able to hook on to the city sewer, you must have city water. Are there you are, there are some cases where it has been waived. It's okay. not an absolute requirement. That's one of the things we we're looking at as a revision in our water and sewer ordinance is to require that. But there are places where in theory you can you know, get sewer as opposed to water. Yeah. Another point before the vote that I'll just use as an illustration that if you're not careful, you'll outrun your resources. We had this discussion in our retreat about you know, what our basically is a term of a strategic reserve for water and sewer capacity. If you, when the, the town and the county went together on the River Bend water line, an excellent idea to serve people out on the River Bend area that are characterized by bad water or failing water or substandard installations that have been just thrown together over the years to get by. Admittedly, no sense in pointing fingers. But it also ran water to the River Bend subdivision, which hadn't had town water before and was in danger of falling, or excuse me, failing uh, under state dinner regulations. And it might require them to uh, even possibly close the subdivision or put it on emergency water. Now, admittedly, the purpose of providing water to a community in need, I think everybody, the town and the county agreed was a high priority. In fact, it was one of the bedrock uh, issues that allowed for being able to secure the grant funding from the state to support that. However, in the, in the rush, if you want to call it that way, to, to get the project in and get rid of in the states put on the water system, failed to realize, of course, that the ultimate application called for, according to state standards, the, you know, the water allocation per residential unit in River Bend Estates. Total, that subtracted 50,000 gallons a day from the town to its center for water capacity, just to serve River Bend Estates. So that's where your allocation can go if you're not careful. You can want to put it in dollar dollar uh, figures. Fifty thousand, not fifty thousand gallons a day is, in essence, maybe one hundred and seventy-five to two hundred thousand dollars worth of space in a water tank. We started off with a motion and had a second. <laughs> Farrell got us a little off track. Sam got us off on another road right now. Let's get back on focus here. <laughs> We're ready for a motion. We're ready to say any further discussion. All in favor, raise your hand. If you can remember what it was, it was 80 grand, right? 80 grand. 80 grand. That's 80 the important grand. thing. Discussion DOT right away, Lowen. Still unhand. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> Break them up. Our mowing has uh, been given quite a bit of attention. Lack or that lack of, yeah. and um, so it has been directed to the uh, uh, streets and sidewalks. And Joyce and I are the ones on the streets and sidewalks, and we have met. We've looked at it, and we, uh, we surely want your input on this because we think this is the biggest problem that we need to, to look at. But before we do that, I'd like to throw it out. We, we'll, I'm going to give just a 
few things about it. First of all, when this started, um, it was, I think there's already all the uh, different people have, who have properties have been, you know, included. They have gotten a message from the note from the town that we weren't going to try to stop mowing as much. And when you say that, we're mowing four things right now. We're mowing, our, we have our properties, we have the state properties, we have the private commercial, and we have private residential. And when I say that, when I say just private property, we have people that own lots that are not necessarily with realtors, and they don't even live here necessarily. But they, and the lots are not kept up. So we have four different problems right here. And <clears throat> when this came into our hands, I called, <coughs> excuse me, I called the uh, state <coughs> the people, and they're willing to work with us. Well, since they're contracted out, though, they only will be able to mow three times in the season. Mm -hmm. So we surely we can't get along with that too well. And, but they are also willing to take sections, which have already started down there, right across from the first, I mean, United Community, of making a, a no mode area. They're willing to look over there in East Franklin and take that entire area and develop it into a no mode right there by the peaks to uh, landscape that. And but all this will not happen. By the way, they're going to do 441 interchange too. But that won't happen until fall. So we still have a problem there. So what we've got to look at, are we going to continue mowing like we're doing? Now, what was story was when these notices were sent out, it was that the commercial private owners, the ones who own the properties, take care of the properties. And are we going to continue that? I think still we do the residential. Is that right, Mr. Right, right. But the, the question is that as far as an impact area was on the commercial zones on DOT right away. Yeah. Not mm -hmm. town right away, but DOT, DOT right, right away. Mm -hmm. And that's not DOT owned property. It's actually right away where the property owners still control their property except for the restrictions of the DOT right away. And several years ago, the way this started, the town started going in. You know the story. I know the story. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, Helen Henson drove home and <laughs> it looked rough, and she picked up the phone and called Ed and said it looked rough, and Ed picked up the phone and called Al and said it looked rough. Helen said it did, and they've been going ever since. Isn't that what you understand, Bill? <laughs> now back, there are some places back to this eco grass that I think they're going to try some of that, aren't they? I'm certain. We've got several sites identified that really. What it, what it comes down to is it's either very difficult for the private property owner to take care of, or there is in fact some confusion about actually who owns what where between DOT ownership and right away and the, the private. Those areas, we got about, well, we got five of them identified, other than the, the site down there that uh, the old uh, Heath's contract. And there's some others like around the, uh, the bridge bridges in East Franklin that are in fact DOT property that could benefit from switching the vegetation, so to speak, to a, a no maintenance kind of thing. Well, I think, you know, we surely don't want a ragged thing. And I think that we need to come up with something of what we're going to do if we, and we need to look at it soon because it's, 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 and it's, it's, growing, it's growing. It's and growing. It's growing. It's right. So Here, well, but we really need to jointly, it would be great if we could all agree on something, <coughs> you know, to do, this is the appearance of people are coming into town, the comments being made of what's gone wrong, with nobody's mowing. Uh, again, Sam is right, people, some of them do not know, is it their job, is it theirs, is it theirs, it doesn't matter anymore, it looks awful. I was going by several places, the grass has gotten so hard, we've got fire hydrants in there. You can even see our fire hydrants in some places. We can't let it go like that. Do we work with DOT, let them do the three times that they're going to give us, 
and I'll hold my breath waiting to see if they'll come out and maintain as often as we would like them to. But we we have to make we have to keep our town looking decent. You know, I mean, it's become a joke. Uh, three different people came up to me today, mm -hmm. and grass has been the conversation. I mean, it's like, look at this. Now, I talked to Bobby P personally today as I was getting tired, and he said Mayor Henson gave him a written letter saying he never had to maintain that spot. And look, you know, well, I'm going to jump in here, okay? Okay, you but I'm just saying, <laughs> yo, and how many and how many places maybe have that little right, mystery? Right, know? right. Here's what I'm going to jump in on. Okay, jump. It's been the policy of the town to mow, mow, mow longer than any of us except Billy probably has been here. And that's been our policy. It got changed this season without us changing. That troubles me. It does. And see, when you ask, are they going to be trying some echo grass? I don't want they, whoever they is, it's this board well, when we're dealing. It might be the, at our direction. Well, I'm not getting that technical. At our direction. But I think we need to keep control because the mowing and the growing season in our town, they mean a whole lot to us. It makes a whole lot of difference how the town looks. I do agree <coughs> if we can catch those little areas between the gutter and the sidewalk and put an echo or put something in there, those are terrible for our men to have to be out there on mowers to try to cross streets get up on top, I mean, it's, 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 it's expensive, it's burdensome, it is, but if you don't do it, people know it. Okay. What I would like for us to consider is a, a two-fold approach. One is to get back more in the way we were, and I'm talking also, Sam, about coming down Frogtown on Phillips Street. It just had not been bush hog or whatever you do, I mean, it just just grown up there, and normally, Normally here lately, there's been a lot of attention on those type of streets. But I want us to get back to the level of, of attention that we were given our streets. And in the meantime, try to find some way that we can work on getting less maintenance involved and if, uh, if we can come up with but, but we cannot count on some of our folks to mow constantly and others not, and us come behind you and, gotta and, have eight plans. And, and, and pay for the others who don't do it. It's not fair for, for the ones who do. Well, I was, I was They're not going to. Well, they don't have to. Right. They don't have to. You've had property owners who have already stepped up in town. Yes, and, you have done it. And, yeah. and really, that's the largest part of the majority. You have the exceptions, and of course, it's just like the broken window or the missing tooth. It attracts attention. <laughs> one missing tooth, the other 31 don't look good, do they? But what I would suggest, instead of going back and, and forfeit all the ground that has been gained from, you know, if I was a private property owner in the commercial district and I've gone outside and gotten the notice and was going out there and taking care of my little piece of property and all of a sudden I saw the town crews come by from the next door neighbor who doesn't give a damn, and mow his farm. I don't think I participated in through the project. I agree. We don't need to back up and lose that. So what I'm saying mm -hmm. is Love the it. best thing to do is to continue with the identifying the property owners. And we've already sent out a second notice. And we've gone around and checked those people who are not complying and sent notices out. And it's been having an effect. There are pieces of property where, for instance, the property owner is an absentee and may or may not have even gotten the notices or the property's up for sale or in the, some specific cases, the property's not developed. And so the property owners don't mow their property anyway. So there are some exceptions and I think suasion at this point is a better alternative rather than abandonment of the ground made so far. The other option that this board may want to consider is going on ahead we've discussed in retreats previously and get into looking at the appearance standards for those people who don't choose to keep their property up to oil with their neighborhood. Admittedly, that can be a thicket. Mm, that huge thicket, Sam. But I know it is. It, in the long run, I think it will be worth the town's attention to look at it. What has been our policy right now? Is the town 
mowing the town property because the Whitmire property is grass. Today, when I was over there, was almost up to my knee. And well, has not been mowed at all. No, we've got a bad there's a, I don't know. There's Something a, needs to be done with it. There's somebody, I forgot the fellow's name right now, that they make cuts and, and bales. Yeah. 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 So yeah. that's yeah. sort of self taken care of. Oh, that but the, the issue on uh, um, private property, the town really doesn't have an effect, doesn't have a policy on it. It's been an adopted, not an adopted, even, it's been a process that has grown. And the town, legally, I'm not sure, has the wherewithal to be on private property, cutting grass, um, especially on DOT easement. I don't think that that's a, a, an enjoyable thing for the town to be doing anyway, taking the risk for an employee being out on private property, mowing property on the high traffic area. I think it's dangerous and it's questionable as to you know, just what the legality may be for the town being out there on it. Those are side issues that we can we can evaluate further. Cutting back to the chase, because, oh, I'm sorry, Bob. Cutting back to the chase, we need to work more closely with those who are not participating at this time. And if necessary, and we can work with them to, we're, there are some places we're gonna need to take care of, like the bridges, for instance, because this DOT property. The DOT has been cut back like other day government agencies. They're having, they've been cutting back their mowing frequency um, on their right of ways. Anyhow, they used to, if you recall, mow four or five times a year. Now they're down to maybe three. If they don't have enough money, it'll be two. I think it's not the DOT's fault here. They're having to live with what they get from Raleigh. And that's just one of the bad things that goes on. And the question is, what happens to the gas tax money? But that's an issue beyond this discussion. So what I'm saying is to the board, I wouldn't rush in to back up. What do you do? That's a prime thing. The, the owners do not take care of their property. We've never, anyway. we've never we maintained that. No, we shouldn't either. Uh, no. I mean, I, we know. I know, but who do you contact? The property. Our you may contact somebody, we have no but if they don't mow it, we don't have any. We don't have any. That's what I'm saying. Now is what he's saying. Are we going to do we something have. like that or are we not? Do we well, have a right to make an ordinance that we can find people? Maybe well, so. And what if they don't want to pay the fine? Put it on their taxes. Yeah, you don't, you can't get there. That's where you put your attorney to work. And yes, come I mean, all sorts of methodologies. <laughs> a civil penalty ordinance is probably preference to calling somebody in the jail for not going to their I'm not satisfied that we can allow this season to go by <coughs> with this hit and miss approach that we have to the moment. I agree with what Sam is saying. But at the same time, like you say, we can't let, we can't have one look it like It just one, looks yeah. like. But again, that, that person who has been meticulously cleaning it up now is going to be totally ticked. Like, I've gone through all this, and the guy next door is getting it done for nothing. You no know effort. what? You go up Town Hill and part of the mud, and then you get to a certain spot. I know it. And then it's just a wilderness. That's right. Thing. Well, yeah, you've got basically a vacant lot that's listed that's for right. sale, and then you've got the phone company office who somehow or another ingested the message that was sent to them. It hadn't gotten to the person that can authorize whoever does their contract mowing so to deal with so them. We want answers. We want decisions. What do we do? I think what we do is I think we mow what we've always mowed for now, and I think we find some way to put on those little strips, which is in my mind is the, some of the biggest part of the substance of the problem, the little one foot wide strips between the that's gutter and the, si and the sidewalk. Yeah, that's the sidewalk and the curb. Yeah, yeah that's right. the part that gets me yeah. I'm not so much concerned about it. Deep into the recess. Yeah, I don't into want to think we we'll be out there mowing personal yeah. property mm -hmm. where some people are doing it. I know when Bob sent out the notice the other day about East Franklin, I drove over there and went, 
from uh, the tire shop all, all the way out towards the Pace Violet. And there was, it was quite evident that a lot of that wasn't mowed. But I went back through there again yesterday, and there's 80, 90 percent of it looks just immaculate through there. So it is having an effect. We are getting good. Good, didn't somebody make all attention to it. Yep. But one thing, one thing is though, when you have a lot like this, you know, Well, no, we well, I mean, well, 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 because of things that are falling yes. down over there. there are trees I went down. through the other day and had to pin back the barbed wire to get through there. Well, I don't know, but that's private property, isn't it? I mean, on the bank, on that It's part. not the bank, it's on our sidewalk. Uh, I know. You can't even walk. There's it's trees laying there. They're over. falling, the whole tree. That's the things we should take care of, and if there's any grass between the sidewalk and the curb, I yes. we still need to do that. Oh, we don't need to get on private property. Well, but what Sam's saying is you're going to end up being on private property technically anyway yeah. when you're on, on that. But if our maintenance department goes by something and it's obviously blocking a sidewalk, block, it should right then and there, it should be cleaned up. It shouldn't be, you know, they're, they're out on the roads, clean up because you see something, you know. There shouldn't be trees right. laying in the middle of the well, sidewalk. Well, we've got two roads to take. I think we all agree we'd like to find some way in the future to maybe this echo grass or some similar product to transplant or take care of those little strips. Mm -hmm. Makes sense to do that. We're not going to get that this year. It's just not, not enough time. I mean, if we do, great. But between now and then, do we hold our breath and, and just let the folks mow and then some not mow? Or do we go back to mowing the way we have done for the last 10 or 12 years? Is, that, is there a third option? <coughs> The way it looks right now, I mean, you know, if we have a lot of rain, we're going to have a wilderness for mm -hmm. mm -hmm. um, some, uh, some places. What's everybody's uh, opinion? We don't want to do this. Well, seriously, I mean. Everybody needs to speak to face. Well, the, with, okay, as, as an example, one place is right in front of Bill Talbot's office, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's about two feet wide and about eight feet long. And it's just a little bank, and it's and, and it's where there was a there is a light pole there. There's a, a, a water service. There's a small uh, little lot of there. Utilities coming out there. Um, that would be that would be a place that, that would be wonderful for this echo grass or something there. Mm -hmm. But if we're going to do it, let's just go ahead and do it. I mean, yeah. let's, well, there's no use in waiting until this time next year to see what's going to happen. Little places like that up, up town, you're really going to have trouble. I mean, who's going to who's going to hire somebody to come in and, and mow that one little strip? Mm -hmm. And if we can just get it over with now, I'll, I'll just as soon do it. Get it over with. Well, another one's down there at Mosses. So Billy, then what? Sam has a has a, a kind of a list of places mm -hmm. that I'm talking about about this this, and I don't even I honestly don't know who owns. Right. That. I mean, you're, you're suggesting accelerating the process probably of going to the maintenance free. Yes, at least. But let's, even if we accelerate it, we're still going to have, <coughs> have some, some time between yeah. now and then. Yeah. And hell, I want to move. What do you got, Bob? Uh, one of the things that I'm hearing is that we don't have enough county people to do this. I probably get asked two or three times a month from people out here why we don't contract some of this out with as many people that have little small morning services out here. Uh, we're worried about the economy, et cetera, et cetera. Our contract uh, mowers could probably do it a whole lot cheaper and then we could still use some of our employees on the areas that we have. That's not, that's a point, but not for tonight's discussion. 
obviously, I'm not facing it. I mean, it, well, tonight we're trying to decide if there was a third option, and I think that is an option to contract this. I did apologize. You're all right, sir. <laughs> well, at this point, another factor is the economics of continuing to have town employees doing work that really is questionable as to whether they should be doing or not. Um, we have the opportunity, and of course, we've discussed this in several retreats about windling down by means of attrition the number of town employees who are dedicated to like this random mowing, or it's not really random, it's mm -hmm. complete mowing, no. that has just grown up over the years as a thing to do. If you trace it back, I think that the majority of the additional mowing occurred after the town did away with this garbage pickup and had three additional employees that didn't have anything to do. And then they started, well, they did. They found something to do. Now, two of those employees <coughs> are getting ready to retire. And it's my approach. And I'm still operating on what the board discussed in <coughs> several times ago, is to, as we come to those things, to evaluate the jobs and, if possible, to trim out the work. In other words, not do it, not have to replace an employee, not have to assume all the benefit cost and all that in perpetuity for the employee. And that is one of the motivating factors to getting into this reduction. Great. So we've got two employees that are coming up for retirement in the mid part of this year. Yeah. Come back work part time. Well, let's well, you know, know we got two men this year right. and get it ready you for. You look at the point of being able to do away with that, and in some places, as Bob was saying, there may be better ways of doing it, like using, you know, hiring part time people just for the summer to do those areas that are designated that yeah. as trouble areas. Yeah. Well, your, your savings are going to accrue in salary and benefits. The benefits would be almost a complete savings. Yeah, we now <coughs> need to avoid falling into what afflicts a lot of other municipalities where their benefit cost long term is getting to be beyond the means for the municipality to keep on funding within the existing tax structure. I don't think anybody at this table wants to raise taxes. So the time to take those avoidance measures is now, not five years from now, when you're faced with a big problem. To say nothing of the possible legal costs, I don't. <coughs> nobody wants to look at foot high grass, but it would be nothing compared to the legal thicket of a mowing accident on somebody's private property, to or by a town employee. Either way. What about a contract employee? That's their problem. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, that's then, yeah, they, then they the liability follows so, that. And I do think we so avoid a lot of that by a contract. We won't know we, what our exposure is until we go through the painful part of reducing the schedule. And that means that's where we are right now. We're, we've reduced quite a bit of that by simply asking the property owners to voluntarily step up. That's right. That uh, has been functional, but again, no. we're back to the, the gaping tooth. Why are we going to do about the gaping tooth? Yeah, that's it. We've got we've to do something. We've got to do something. We've got to around this button. Yes. We need, and we've already started again with the second notices, and we're calling people, and I think that's the way to deal with them. The more people you get onto it, and even this discussion is going to have a certain amount of exposure raising, and people are going to see, well, that's what's behind this thing. I've heard people call and says, what's going on? Explain it. Oh, okay. That's fair. As long as they're taking care of their property, which it is. It just has an easement across. It'd be the same thing with the power company has an easement across the property. I guess looking at our town, if I were coming into town as a stranger, I don't know all this stuff. Right. And then I look at that and I say, oh, I'm going through here and this looks like a neat little place. Driving along. And then I drive along and see. See, one lot or two lots where it's, yeah, it's harvestable grass level. 
Oh, no. Well, I mean, you see that as you drive along. You see people that take care of the yards that is immaculate. You see oh, people yeah. that don't, yeah. that they've got oh, trash and yeah. right. barrel out front burning boxes in it, too. But if we can have any, you know, if we can have any control of it, you know, our town was kept really, we've, really well. We've, we've had control for 10 years. But is there any, I mean, we need to look at something that we could get through this tourist season and this um, well, let's, let's try um, then the conclusion of the experiment to give it another couple of weeks, and then for those who absolutely hold out, you know, your option is control it by means of an ordinance, no. or as Joe suggests, go in there and take care of them. But right. the downside is still is going to be for the 80 or 90 percent of people uh, who are complying, you're sending a negative message. No. The town doesn't really mean it. Well, we can go back and not mow it as well. Do you want Sissy and I to go knock on their doors, the ones that don't? <coughs> we can okay. go visit them. Sure. If you give a list, I don't mind going to talk, I talk to them. I'll go and talk to them. Besides the problem that they're not all going to, and besides the problem some of it's DOT and they're, they're just not going to become, they're not obligated to, but what, three times a year. Well, DOT, though, I think we need to mow. And then the, some's going to mow once a week, some's going to mow every, every month, and you're going to start driving them. You know, there'd be no uniformity of it. We're losing, we're ceding control of one of the things that I felt we had the most pride in. See, see that was a huge project, with edging and there's all of that. Are we just going to throw that away? Well, let, me, let me ask a question, Alex. Well, I mean, I'm asking about you. It. If yeah. we're, on one side, we're talking about grass. And I understand that. But on the other side, we're talking about sidewalks. Now, sidewalks is a little different. With right, exactly yeah. what Ferris I'm, said. I'm with you. Um, I mean, if you've got tree limbs that are hanging over, mm -hmm. and you all don't go through this house, uh, if you've got tree limbs hanging over, that need to be Sidewalks to the highway, you've got dry strips in there. I think yeah. you should take care of that. Yeah. Get yeah. Clean we do. Get all stuff like that. Now, where does that come, Sam, and all this other? I mean, are we, do we have a crew that's going out? Are they going well, to they're still sidewalk? doing the sidewalk. It's been on schedule. Well, then what about the sidewalk right here, going down Town Hill? Why is that not mowed? Between the gutter and the sidewalk. It's not being mowed, Sam. That's the well, DLT property. That's either or DLT right or Stribling or somebody. Well, that's, that's what we mowed all, all along. Yes, and that's between that's the sidewalk. That's one of those lots that is listed for sale, and there's no, and the lot is growing up totally. See, see that's between the sidewalk and the gutter, Farrell. That's mm -hmm. what, the, and we're ignoring it. We're ignoring it. We need to keep, I mean, we can keep walk on the sidewalk. We need to keep sidewalks clean and proceed the race between Well, them. and the grass coming up, it really We don't need to go on the other side of the sidewalk on private property. Absolutely. I'm, I'm not sure we ever have, but we still. Oh, yes. Yeah. Well, then, well, then maybe we found the middle ground, Sam. We've been talking about. Yeah. Maybe yeah. we found the middle ground then. And as we've been discussing, some of those areas and they're the ones that would benefit from planting the matter. And the sooner we can do areas. that, yeah. It's, especially like I say, up, up town. And right? that may be the, the rationale yeah, for approaching the property. I think your little spot is a perfect example of it. Because the town can't come in there and plant something on that goofy little strip because it doesn't belong to the town. I don't think DOT wouldn't care one way or the other. Well, they they don't the well, the grass doesn't have to make concern to you. What are you talking about, Sam? Between the sidewalk, Between the sidewalk and the curb. And on the these on the state roadways. If we work with the DOT. Well, no, the DOT isn't going to take care of the mowing any more than they do everywhere else. But they now, take care of that no. Mm -hmm. no. We so, can get permission from any landowner to put some type of application. Get grass. to the holdouts and get them to sign up for the first eco grass planting. I, you know, any, there's lots of different alternatives there are, but rather than throwing up your hands and back up and say, <laughs> well, these people aren't going to comply. No. There we are. That'll be the first I'll volunteer money. No. <laughs> well, what can we put down there at the Down at the Ranger Place? Down there and do all well, the things. Well, that's things. on the list to do. And, and let's that's going to be done do. soon. It's not being done. But between done now and then, are we going to mow at least between the sidewalks and the gutters? Yeah. The curb. I say Excuse we should. I say we should. That to me is most of the battle, unless I'm missing something. I thought that's where we're going to put the ego grass. Maybe we should put the ego grass. Before we put the ego grass, we've got to kill it. 
Well, you know, you you are. <laughs> so now we're back to my preferred solution, which is to spray the ground. Well, you probably had it done last night. <laughs> <laughs> Did you look in front of your place, John? <laughs> Snyder, hope you get beat tomorrow. You don't want to be involved in this. <laughs> Between the curve and I think you should vote. <coughs> I do too. Yes. Mm -hmm. Vote for yeah. no and let's start taking yeah. sections. Now, let's take sections. Let's well, we'll we'll start doing eco. Fine between the gutters and the curves, mm -hmm. right. Now, like coming down Phillips Street towards Fall Town, is it just that a conscious a effort? Street. That's what? That's a town street. So it's just, we just not got to it lately? No. Okay. No. But you've not ceded control of that one? No. Okay. Town right. streets, the town is still okay. maintaining or going to maintain. We're doing the residential areas regardless of whether it's DOT or anything else because those are just a higher priority. The commercial is the target zone because it makes the most sense for now. Well, we really like our Pinks is state-owned property. It's not an easy. You got a letter from the mayor. Yeah, I wonder. Okay. But if we don't mow pink, how bad is it going to be? We could, you know, if the DOT says you can go in there and start the project, we could just as fine to go in there and treat those one of the areas to spray and kill it and start cleaning it. Where we, we have a solution. Yeah, it's getting there. Yeah. And deal with it. get us out of this. <laughs> if we beat this yeah, yeah, get us out of here. Well, get us get a motion. Well, well, well what if we all we're going to do is we're going to continue. We're going to take care of the, of the town roads. We're going to mm -hmm. make sure that we go ahead and get the back strips <coughs> between the sidewalk and the gutters or whatever on it. We're not going to, to uh, mow on private property, property, personal property. And we're going to continue to work with commercialized property to get them to take responsibility for their property and maintenance. And if it had to be from the state and it did it, we'll work with them. Yeah, yeah. and we're already working with the state. Yeah. yeah. They're, they're, they're going to plan eco grants and they're going to build these places to try it out first. And as part of that, we're going to start the exploratory process of alternative eco grants. Eco grants? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Is that the form of a motion? Yes. <laughs> and I second it. <laughs> and I second it. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. I'm going in summer. Any more discussion? All in favor, raise your hand. All right. Uh, so, Joe, you got your wish about extending the meeting time. Joe and I had an argument a couple of days ago, amongst many other things, about the length of the meetings. Yeah. I said the shorter the better, but Joe wants to have a little bit of extra cushion time. Well, hell, I've had to argue with you half the night. That's what it took. <laughs> we going to continue this meeting on the 21st? Yes. yes. Motion for that fast? Yes. So we can't adjourn, but we're going to continue. Let's continue. <coughs> continue. Mike, were you here for the topic we didn't get to? He's been looking like he's really enjoying it. <laughs> you're, you're just such a, a dignitary to be here. We. I hate that you just sit back there like a wallflower. Oh, Some things come natural. All right, let's hear it.